Kia ki te pito a ka hoki Ki te papa sau o kolo Ki te papa ihi o mahi Hi, I'm Kayla, fairly recent Army dropout after eight years of active duty. Right now, I'm currently traveling around the U.S. in my 1991 Mitsubishi Delica van, trying to figure out my next moves. As I was preparing to transition out of active duty, I ended up doing quite a bit of research and learning about some opportunities that I didn't know existed. One of these is the IRR, the Individual Ready Reserves, which I've previously written about and also done a video on in some more detail, which I'll link below. What I learned is that the IRR is actually a great way to maintain your commission if you're an officer without completely resigning it. So as an example, I've resigned from active duty, but I haven't completely resigned my commission. Now I'm just in the individual ready reserves, which requires no real commitment, no drilling, no annual training. What's interesting to me about the IRR is that in the case that I decided at some point I wanted to re-enter the military, whether that's in the guard, the reserves, or active duty, it would be much easier to do this as opposed to resigning my commission completely and then trying to fill out the packet and get seen by the board and evaluated as to whether I could come back in or not. And from what I understand, that's much more difficult. Now to back up a minute, the IRR is what every single soldier, officer, or enlisted is enrolled in if they have not completed eight years of active duty. So if you enlist for five years or you graduate from a service academy and you have a four-year service obligation, whatever's left over, the difference between that and eight years, you will be automatically enrolled in the IRR if you resign or leave active duty. So along with being a way to maintain your commission and just leave your options open, keep a foot in the door, in the case that you do want to return to the military, the IRR also has some interesting benefits. So one of those is the ID card that you receive. Typically, when you outprocess and go to the DEER's office, they're not going to automatically give you an IRR ID card. You kind of have to seek it out. Because I had done some research and I knew these ID cards existed, I decided to try to get one for myself. When I actually cleared post and I was out processing at the DEER's office, of course their ID card machine was broken, so the gentleman there just told me to hold on to my active duty CAC and come back to post another time to try to get that IRR ID card printed. So I left and I had been gone for several months traveling the country in my van. I came back to JBLM recently and visited the DEER's office. My CAC had expired by then, so I had to go get in line, get a visitor pass, deal with all this drama, which was kind of a pain in the ass. and went to see them about getting this ID card printed. So my particular case was different because I had already completed eight years of active duty and therefore my military service obligation was complete and I would not be automatically enrolled in the IRR. However, I elected to stay in the IRR because again, I wanted to keep my options open. I don't think I'm going back in the military, but who knows what will happen in life. Because of this, when I saw the gentleman at the DEER's office, I showed him my DD-214 and my separation orders, which indicated that I was assigned to the USAR, the United States Army Reserves, but on my DD-214, he checked for a service commitment or like reserve commitment end date, and I didn't have one of these. And he's like, I don't, I don't think you're in the IRR. So I had to explain um, that I thought because I was an officer, there wasn't any really contractual agreement that I would be going by in terms of my enrollment in the IRR. And because I'd already completed eight years of active duty, I wasn't being auto-enrolled in the IRR with a projected end date at my eight-year mark. So essentially, I was like, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure I'm in the IRR. I opted to be in the IRR, and it was in my resignation paperwork. Could you check in your system? So he was able to verify that I was indeed in the IRR, and he sent me back to get the ID card printed. This ID card is pretty interesting. There are some interesting benefits. None of it is particularly earth shattering, but there are some things that, especially if you're a traveler, are quite useful. So I'll go ahead and grab my card so you can have a look. So as you can see straight away, this looks quite different than a CAC. First of all, this has a horizontal orientation versus vertical, so it's quite easy to tell the two apart immediately. I have my identification photo, my name, my affiliation as a reservist, pay grade and rank, my specific branch, up here it says it expires indefinitely, and again, that is because I've already fulfilled my eight-year military service obligation, and so I don't have any contractual agreement or anything after that. I didn't know what the expiration date was going to say when they printed it out, so this was pretty interesting to me. You'll also notice across the front it says Authorized Patronage MWR Commissary Unlimited Exchange. This honestly was the part that was the most appealing to me, particularly because I was going on this one-year road trip in my van. 
On the back, it kind of looks like a CAC. It's got the barcodes, my other ID photo, date of birth. Medical, it says verify eligibility. So the reason that it says this is because you don't get TRICARE when you're in the IRR. You only get TRICARE if you're on active duty orders for 30 days or more. So that's why it says verify eligibility. However, you can purchase dental insurance when you're in the IRR. And in that case, your DOD ID number would be your insurance ID number. A few of the additional considerations that I found particularly interesting so again on the id card it says mwr and with that as a traveler usually i'm showering at truck stops or in a body of water if there is one but typically if it's at a truck stop then you're paying anywhere between 12 and 15 dollars per shower and that adds up for a while why spend the money if you don't have to so if i'm able to you know visit any military installation whether it's army navy air force coast guard whatever and there's a gym there and there's a shower, then that does make a big difference. Additionally, I think it's a pretty good opportunity to have the ability to just get on post and see what type of equipment they have available. When you're traveling like this, especially in a small vehicle like I have, you're not bringing a lot of recreation equipment with you. So whether it's paddle boards or kayaks or fishing or hunting equipment, a lot of that stuff I know installation dependent is available at the MWR. With this ID card, you can rent all of that stuff and get on post in the first place without having to deal with getting a visitor pass and all that. Someone I know informed me the other day that apparently all veterans now, I think with a service-related disability, it might be all veterans in general, have the ability to get on post and have access to the PX commissary and MWR facilities. So from what I understand, that is true. However, getting on post is the problem. So if you don't have some type of retiree or dependent or reservist identification that will get you in the gate, then you still have to go get a visitor's pass. But with this IRR ID card, I have a reserve affiliation and I'm let on post just like anyone normally would with any of these other approved identification cards. Another piece is the fact that you really have the opportunity to access some places that are pretty neat and desirable that you wouldn't otherwise be able to because it's really expensive or typically booked or really crowded. So an example of this would be, that comes to mind, is the Halekoa in Hawaii on Oahu. It's a hotel that is open exclusively to military members and with the IRR ID card, again with a reservist affiliation, according to their website, I'd be able to get a room there. Or maybe even the beach bungalows I've heard about, I think also on Oahu, I'm not sure if it's a Navy or Army base, but apparently there's some really cool beach bungalow type places you can stay. And again, that's something that it's available on post that you'd be able to reserve and use if you're in the IRR. I also think that the ability to go and use the auto shop on post is pretty useful. Generally speaking, with the work that we've done on my van on the road, we've done oil changes on the side of the road, we've done work in people's driveways, and all that's worked out fine. But some people may prefer to have all of their tools or have some extra infrastructure and stuff available to them in actual space. What, from what little I looked into it, it is a little bit involved. You have to take classes and get certified on how to use all the tools and machinery. And there is, from what I understand, an hourly cost. But if that's something that would be useful to you, that is, again, something else that you can access if you have this IRR ID card. Something that I imagine people would want to know about is accessibility to space available flights. From what I researched online, people in the IRR do not have the ability to fly Space A unless they're on active duty orders and they need some additional paperwork credentialing to be able to do that. So as of now, that's not something that's available to members of the IRR. So if you're preparing to separate and you're not sure how to go about this, if you're an officer, you just need to make sure that in your paperwork you specifically say that you would like to be enrolled in the IRR. Now this should happen automatically if you've served less than eight years of active duty, but who knows? I would just put it in there just to make sure that you're actually going to be enrolled. And then when you get your separation orders, it should have a United States Army Reserves affiliation and it should specify the IRR. For enlisted members, it should really probably be a similar process, but I'm not completely sure how it works. I imagine that, again, you also have to elect to be in the IRR and be enrolled if you've already served for eight years. But if you're under eight years, you'll probably be automatically enrolled. And then just remember, as you're out processing, when you visit the DEER's office and you give up your active duty CAC, you need to make sure that you ask them for your IRR identification card. And I imagine they don't get this request very often because it seemed to confuse the gentleman that I spoke with at first. So I would just make sure to do your research, have the proper paperwork, multiple forms of identification, 
and really try to not let them shoo you away without first looking you up in the system. Like if they just look at your paperwork and they're like, no, this is wrong. Um, you're not in the IRR. Just see if you can ask them to actually look you up in the system because that's where they could actually verify whether you're in the IRR or not. I really hope this was helpful. This is something that I didn't know about. I found out about this ID card on um, one website that it was mentioned very briefly. And it's not something that has been well advertised, not something that I think a lot of people are educated on or aware of. I had never seen one of these ID cards before. I didn't know anybody who had gone through the process, but I wrote about this in the article that I, I wrote about the IRR about two years ago, I think. So now that I've actually got the ID card and gone through the process, I wanted to make sure to share that with people so they would kind of know how to go about it. And what potentially useful services are available with this particular reserve status? specifically with respect to the ID card. So whether you're someone who's getting out in less than a year or 15 years from now, thanks for listening and best of luck with your transition.